Our next guest is David Levinson. He's the Democratic candidate for United States Senate. He attended Middletown School. He's a graduate of St. Andrews School in Middletown. He also is a graduate of Harvard College and Harvard Law School. David Levinson, welcome to Focus Delaware. Hello, Bob. It's good to be with you today. David, let's get right to the heart of the matter. What do you consider to be the main issue? What's the main point of this election? The issue in Delaware this year is the economy. This Senate election is really a referendum on Reaganomics. President Reagan has made it very clear. He thinks Reaganomics is working. He had said that if people like Senator Roth are reelected, there will be no change and he will stay the course. But I have been traveling from one end of Delaware to the other, talking with thousands of Delawareans about our problems. And Delawareans believe there is a need to adjust the course. They need to send that message to Washington, and they want to send that message to Washington. And the best way to send that message to Washington is to elect a new United States Senator to carry it. Okay, Dave. Now, I've been reading the paper, and Senator Roth has claimed that you've been <coughs> isolating votes that he made on Meals on Wheels and on Social Security, and it's been unfair, uh, he claims. And he says that in actuality, you have to look at his whole voting record. Now, do you consider these to be issues? Do you consider that he has not voted uh, fairly? Do you feel that his criticism is uh, fair, that you've isolated a few votes that he's made and not looked at the whole picture? The one thing that I do agree with is that you should look at the whole picture. Senator Roth's entire record on older Americans' legislation should be viewed in its entirety before you speak about just individual votes. Let's look at his whole record. The National Council of Senior Citizens, from 1973 to the present, has said that Senator Roth has a, a rating of 32 percent on issues of concern to older Americans. That means that the only independent group in America that rates senators on issues of concern to the elderly has said that Senator Roth has voted wrong 68 percent of the time on issues of concern to the elderly. Now that's looking at the whole record. Now let's take individual parts of it. Last year, Senator Roth voted four times to cut minimum Social Security benefits. That means taking $122 a month away from elderly widows. I, that's not the kind of America I want to live in. And on July 24, 1978, when the f direct federal funding of Meals on Wheels was first created, Senator Roth voted no, too. Fortunately, it passed. And I deliver those meals once a month for my Rotary Club. And I go into those homes, and some of them are shacks, to be perfectly frank. And the people in them are sick or they're crippled, and they're poor, and they're alone. Because if they weren't all of those things, they wouldn't qualify. And I think that all the senators who voted against that program should be brought home, and they should vote again, and they, and they should look at those people and deliver those meals, and then go back and vote again. And if they still vote against it, they ought to go live that way for a while. The News Journal said, Dave, that uh, you're almost a millionaire. <clears throat> now, that sounds like a lot of money to me. Uh, Senator Roth said that you were going to bring the first seven-figure uh, campaign into the state of Delaware. Uh, is that the fact? Well, you know, it's kind of interesting to me. Uh, Republican candidates have been outspending their Democratic candidates' opponents anywhere from three to one to five to one in federal elections in recent years. I guess they think that an election isn't fair unless they can outspend their opponent by three to one to five to one. Senator Roth will only outspend me two to one. And I think that I'm not complaining. I don't see why he should complain. But I will say one thing that he's right about. I did bring Delaware its first million dollar Senate campaign, Senator Roth's Senate campaign. You know, there's a Bill Roth is charged that you have no new ideas to offer. Uh, he stated that he's done a good record and he should be reelected on his record. Uh, what types of policies uh, would you like to see government adopt to turn this economy around and get business moving again? Well, the primary problem, of course, is jobs. Three, uh, 30,000 Delawareans are out of work. Three million more Americans are out of work since Roth Camp was first passed. Now 14 million Americans are out of work. Another five to six million Americans only have part-time jobs and one full-time jobs. We have to put people back to work. And I've proposed a specific three-point program, which the Christian Science Monitor told me was the best thought-out program of any challenger of either party. Can you summarize that briefly? Yes, I can. Well, I don't know how briefly, Bob, but I'll try. First, a new a trade policy so that uh, foreign governments cannot unfairly support foreign companies in their trading with us. 
you know, a, a Toyota costs $6,000 in this country, and a Chevette costs $14,000 in Tokyo, and that's ridiculous. I don't want to start a trade war. We're already in a trade war. I want to stop losing a trade war. Second, I proposed a long-term mortgage bond policy that would not bring us 100,000 homes, as Senator Roth's bill would bring us, at a tremendous cost to the taxpayer, but would bring us two million housing starts a year, which is what we really need, at no cost to the taxpayer, through a very creative concept of equity, shared equity appreciation, in which the people who own the home, when they sell the home, would simply pay the federal government back. This would put everyone back to work in the housing industry immediately, and the housing industry has led us out of every depression in the last 50 years. Finally, I've suggested a computerized job bank program. Some of the preliminary work has been done on that through various kinds of federal funding, uh, very minimal federal funding in the past. But a computerized job bank program would help people find more quickly the jobs that are available. And if you find a job more quickly, you reduce the time that someone is unemployed, you are bringing down the rate of unemployment. The important thing to realize is that for every percentage point you bring down the rate of unemployment, you put tens of billions of dollars into the federal treasury. That's what it's all about, balancing the budget. Mayor, I want to change the topic now. Gun control, mm -hmm. what's your position on that? Well, I was raised, you know, in Middletown, and, and I live on a farm near Middletown in a, in a rural area. And, you know, when I grew up, people liked having their guns. And I would oppose any kind of legislation that would make it impossible for people to have their guns. Well, do you then propose that people should be allowed to uh, walk the streets carrying handguns? Not unlicensed handguns. In other words, I think that it should be difficult and there should be a waiting period before someone can license a, a handgun, uh, you know, a small Saturday night special and they should demonstrate that they need it in their work. The one thing that I do not think should be permitted is for people to walk around with Saturday night specials concealed and the police be able to do nothing about it until they actually walk into a liquor store or a grocery store and hold someone up and, or shoot someone. The police have to be given more power, more authority through legislation uh, so that they can stop that kind of behavior before it happens, not after it happens. The, the Russians have indicated that they're going to move to continued military build up. Now, you've recommended military cutbacks. Um, won't that leave us in an endangered position vis-a-vis -vis the Russians and where would you propose making the cuts? Okay, first of all, uh, Bob, what I suggested was not military cutbacks. I think we need to spend more than we have been spending on defense. Uh, however, I think that the degree of the increase was excessive and that is one issue where Senator Roth and I agree. There are a few issues where we do agree and that's one of them. We both believe that money has been thrown at the Defense Department too quickly, they cannot spend it efficiently. But where Senator Roth and I do not agree is where the money should be spent. Uh, I favor a mutual negotiations with the Soviet Union for a mutual, verifiable nuclear arms reduction treaty. I don't think we have to build more nuclear weapons before we can at least negotiate with them to build fewer nuclear weapons. Now, Senator Roth told us that he was uh, fighting waste as uh, in government as chairman of the old McClellan committee and that he was responsible for the inspector general for the Department of Defense. What are you going to do differently than uh, Senator Roth has done to fight waste in government? Senator Roth talked to you about his service on the McClellan committee? You yes. say? Well, let me say first, I'm kind of surprised about that. Let me say first of all that I think everyone should be fighting waste every day. You know, we just don't have enough to be able to waste, whether it's in business or our personal lives or in government. Uh, that's not an election year issue. But as far as the McClellan Committee is concerned, uh, Senator Roth, uh, uh, when he assumed the chairmanship of that committee, uh, it, it, it was reported in the News Journal that he had been absent from 1973 to 1980 93% uh, uh, of the time from that committee's deliberations. And when Senator Roth was asked about it, he said it just wasn't one of his priorities. Now, I understand that United States Senators are busy. Uh, they can't go to every meeting uh, all the time. But I think that if you're absent from 93% of a committee's hearings and uh, you say it was not one of your priorities, that it is scarcely something that I would want to be um, uh, sort of boasting about and suggesting that I be reelected re because of my uh, uh, service on that particular committee. And as far as the Inspector General is concerned, there were two bills to provide inspector generals to the Department of Defense, and I certainly favored one of them. I favored the one introduced by Lloyd Benson of Texas, 
in which the Inspector General would have been truly independent. The bill that Senator Roth introduced to kill that bill was one that made the Inspector General report to the Secretary of Defense. Now, I don't like the, the idea of having an auditor report to the person he's supposed to be auditing. That's not independent to me. Dave, one final question. In a small state like Delaware, constituent services are very important. Um, how do you feel that you can improve on constituent services in Delaware uh, and different from what Senator Roth has done? Well, every senator and congressman has the responsibility of providing constituent services. He's provided with a budget to do that by the federal government. I feel that the one thing that I can add is what I've called my answer ban. I have promised the people of Delaware that if I'm elected their United States Senator, that the answer van will pay regularly scheduled visits to every town and every community in the state. I think that some people would like to have contact with their Senator's office, but don't feel comfortable going to an imposing office building in Wilmington. It's really, it's too much of a trip, but they would like to have contact. This will give people in small towns in the state regular contact with their Senator's office, and I think that would be a real improvement. Well, thank you, Dave Levinson, for coming on Focus Delaware and sharing some of your views with us. Thank you, Bob. And good luck to you also. Thank you. And now watch.